Skim coating, maybe you've heard about it. I see it on videos all the time and I'm sure a lot of you wonder what it is, what it's used for, and how to do it. Well, we're going to talk about that right after this. Hey, thanks for stopping by here at that Kilter Guide DIY videos where our goal is to teach you guys how to do your own home improvement and repair projects and to teach you how to do it right. That's our slogan. Now before we get going, I hope you'll take a second to subscribe to our channel if you like what you see here. Go ahead and watch the video if you like it. Hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon, and that bell will let you get notified each time we put out a new video. And also in the link or in the description down below this video, I'm going to put some good information you might find useful like a link to our online store where you can purchase all these tools if you need and some more information on our website like some free guides I wrote to help you guys out and so on. And as always, I appreciate you guys stopping by. You guys are why I do this and I appreciate your support. Now let's get into skim coating. First of all, why would you use skim coating? What's the purpose of it? Well, I think there's a lot of misconception out there because I see the term used loosely for just about everything. It's like if you put mud on the wall and wipe it off, you did some skim coating. Maybe in other areas, that's how it's used, but terminology can change by area, but I've been around for 30 plus years doing this and the, the common way we use skim coating means coating an entire surface. So like coating in a whole wall, a whole ceiling, etc. A big area. Even if you don't coat the whole wall, let's say you're doing a repair this big, if you go over it with a thin coat of mud, that could be considered skim coating. It's where you're coating a large area solid. But it's usually a nice thin coat. So what do you use it for? What's the purpose? Well, there's numerous things. Uh, if you see what we're going to do here today is we're going to get rid of some popcorn texture like in this picture here but what we did it's a little bay window area and the little ceiling that we're going to do it needed repaired i figured why not just get rid of the popcorn while i'm at it so i scraped it off but that leaves a really bumpy surface like in this picture if you were to just paint it like that it would look terrible i've seen people do that trust me don't don't do it Plus, we're doing repairs on this one, so the repairs would really make it look like a mess. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to skim coat it. So, you can use it to get rid of a texture. If you don't like a texture, like say this knockdown, some people hate knockdown. If you don't like it and you really want to get rid of it, skim coat the wall, sand it smooth, start over, do what you want. Popcorn ceilings. If you can't get rid of the popcorn, it's too hard to scrape or if it has asbestos and you just don't want to mess with it, you can skim coat it. To me, that's not my favorite way because it takes an awful lot of mud and I'm concerned that over the years it may crack more because you got this continuous layer of mud about an eighth of an inch thick or more. And that's an awful lot to ask it not to ever crack. I mean, mud is pretty brittle. And here's a chunk of some hot mud and this is really thick. So it, it's tougher than normal and hot mud dries a lot harder and more tough, but you see how easy that breaks? So do you really want to put a heavy layer on popcorn? Now I've done it because sometimes it's the only option. If you do have popcorn ceilings with asbestos in it, you can hire an asbestos abatement crew, but they are really pricey. You might pay like five to 10 times as much to get rid of it that way. So skim coating it might be an option. A lot of times we can also just put a new layer of sheetrock over it, but either way, it's not gonna be a real cheap option. If you're doing a smooth wall, and let's say you go through and finish all the joints and they look kind of like in this picture, you got mud here, raw drywall here, mud here, so on. You can't paint it like that. It will look terrible because the mud sections come out really slick and the paper sections, they show the grain of the paper different textures. So what do you got to do there? You skim coat it. You skim coat the whole wall. Now it's all mud, has the same exact texture. Sand it smooth, touch it up, you got a smooth one. So there's a number of different uh, cases where you could use a skim coat. 
my advice though is never put it on real thick. An eighth of an inch is about the thickest you want to do at a time. I've got a video out there about the advantages of hot mud and I put hot mud on a half inch thick and regular joint compound a half inch thick and if you watch that you'll see it came out terrible. Hot mud was fine. The regular joint compound took a week to dry and it still wasn't very dry and it cracked terrible and shrinks terrible. You just can't do it. So limit yourself to about an eighth of an inch at a time. Okay, what do you need to do this? Well, obviously you need some drywall mud and pans and knives. I often use a 14 inch because it gets more done quicker. You could use a 12. The lowest I would go would be a 10. And that's just because it's so hard to explain, but these float better. And you've got less lines that you're gonna leave behind. So try and use a 12. And what we're using today is this USG Plus 3 Lightweight. Now I make it look really light, but it's actually 30, 35 pounds, but it's lighter than the regular. You don't need to use that green label all purpose. Everybody grabs that. This will do everything you need, especially for skim coating. The green label is primarily for taping, but you can tape with this too. So I would buy this. It sands easier, shrinks less. It's easier to work with and just works better as an all-purpose. Here I've got a 14 inch mud pan and or actually it's, it's bigger than 14 but it's, it's for my 14 inch knife. And then on this one I put these grippy tapes on it. I've explained that before but these are just uh, non-slip tread tape and it allows me to grip this pan a whole lot better. With just two fingers it's easy to grip. So let's get started and I'll show you how it works. Okay, so I don't think you can even see me in the video, but here's the surface we're going to skim coat. So I'm just going to show you this a little bit here, but this will give you the technique and show you what you need to know. So you start out with a, a nice heavy load of mud, about as much as you can fit on your knife, and start at an edge and just, you might want to spread it just a little ways and then carry it, pick it up and carry it further like that. Uh, I'll, I'll show you a picture in a minute when it's all done, but the little bit of bumpy texture is showing through a little bit. So that's about perfect. We want very little to show through. So we put her down just a little bit heavier and then And then just keep spreading your mud out. And first put it on kind of rough, don't worry about it. Now if you get a scratch like that, just take your knife pick up the scratch item. I just wipe it off the end of my pan and I'll toss it later. Okay, I think that kind of does it for the rough coat. So if you see any areas that are a little bit light, just put a little bit more on. Once you get that all on there, I would start with one side and start smoothing it out. Now that line I left right there, I'm gonna leave that and show you a picture of it. That's actually the one you wanna try not to leave. And there's a reason because there's certain lines that if you leave, they're harder to sand out and certain ones that are easier. So. so what I do is I put slightly more pressure on the leading edge, which would be this one, just slightly. And that way, over on this side, it leaves a lap mark. And I'll show you that in the picture. This is a lap mark. Lap marks sand off easy. These other ones don't because one side is much lower. So you end up having to sand a lot off of the high side here. 
on a lap mark, all you gotta sand off is the lap mark. It comes off much easier. It's an experience thing, trust me on it. Okay, you notice in the video that uh, I quit leaving these marks over here and it looks pretty dang smooth. It's not as smooth as it looks, but it's pretty dang smooth. Now, now I'll get back in the picture here. Now, this is a lot harder than it looks. This is kind of an advanced technique, but there is another way I'm gonna show you in a future video how to skim coat easier. It's just slower. It's not the way I do it. It often takes two coats of mud. With this method, I can usually make textures like that or like this one in this picture. This is a ceiling. I got rid of a swirl texture. I made the texture go away in one coat of mud because to roll it on, it's really hard to roll on mud that's this thick. But to put it on with a knife, you can put it on, therefore you can put it on thicker. And of course, thicker is gonna cover more. So you do this, the secret is practice with your knife. Now, uh, the best way I can tell you these bigger knives, they take more effort. They look easy to run. You actually have to push pretty hard to get that mud so to, to spread out. So if it feels like it's like breaking up behind you and it's not spreading right, push harder. And keep your knife, if this was the flat ceiling, keep your knife at about a 30 to 40 degree angle. And what you do is you start out steeper like this and as you go you lay your knife down so it starts out here and spread 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 and it lays down more and more so it's just a lot of practice if you do much skim coating coat about one wall and you'll probably find you get a whole lot better just practice 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 and as far as the mud you can see yes I leave it really thick this is straight out of the box you don't want to thin it down very much or it's going to shrink more and it won't cover as well when you're trying to hide a texture. Now I'm going to have a link down in the description below. If you click on that, it's our Amazon store link. It'll take you right to the tools you need to do this. Uh, we've got all kinds of drywall tools that I've hand selected for you. That'll help you choose the right ones and not get suckered into gimmicks so easily. Also clicking on those links does help us. We get a small commission and you don't pay a penny more. There's also other good information in there about our website. We got some good articles on there and blogging, writing articles to help you out, giving away free information and a whole bunch more. All our videos will be there and so on. So check out that description. Hey, I hope that helped you out with skim coating. Is that what you thought it was? Let me know if it helped you out or if it confused you more. If you need some help, put a comment down below. I'll try and help you with that. Um, if you need advanced help, look on our website there's an advice page for that i hope that helped you out i appreciate you guys coming by and sharing another day with me and i hope i can teach you guys more and more about this stuff but until the next video you guys take care we'll see you then